Yes, people, what's going on? I welcome you back to Football Therapy, my YouTube channel. <laughs> and of course, I'm your host, Jan. Welcome back to Chelsea News, the daily, twice daily, sometimes even thrice daily series here on the channel where I reflect on what's being said in the headlines here in my beautiful Stamford Bridge studio, consolidating and aggregating said headlines, offering you, offering you my humble opinion for whatever, learning English at the same time for whatever that's worth. Always asking for the collective fan opinion down in the comments in between watching my multiple videos a day. I recommend you check out my sponsor. It's in to it's entirely, in totally, that's entirely and totally put together. But one thing for sure, it's free. And who doesn't like free stuff? I'm delighted they're my partner. Uh, OneFootball is the best companion app for getting your new statistics, results, lineups, uh, fixtures, alerts. You know, uh, it's really slick. It's well made. It's free, mate. You can do it on all devices as well as a website. Simply click the link in the top of the description at some point in the next part of your life from this video of course or scan the QR code in the corner right there that will remain in the corner for the video's entirety alrighty then lots to talk about today let me tell you the Premier League have refused Chelsea a sponsor which is frustrating of course we've reflected on the fact that Chelsea are honing and closing in on stake.com it looks bad, it's negative in terms of the connotations. Chelsea, of course, themselves have spoken out against gambling. But we're going to have a front of shirt sponsor. Look, man, I get it. We need money. We're not in Europe. We need to take the bigger deals. And it would be a one-year deal. But despite all that, it looks bad in every sense of the word. It legitimately looks bad on the shirt. Uh, and like physically, and it's a bad look in terms of the optics of Chelsea going for a gambling company. Yeesh. Uh, we will, we'll talk about some transfers as well. Um, lots of players hopefully being sold. And Chelsea making money. We do need money. Players need to go. Um, yes, I did do an upload video yesterday. A bit more of a personal video. A lapel mic that I, I understand that like, the audio was a bit breathy in between words. Maybe I should have noise gated it. But I speak about Chelsea's current position. It's a bit of an opinion piece. Um, but if you want my thoughts on the ownership, uh, you know, big players leaving and how that's, you know, difficult for all of us. But what are the, the, the deeper connotations of where Chelsea have been for a long time. Go and watch my previous upload. I implore you to. Oh, you don't have to actually. <laughs> Just if you fancy it. Right. The Mail Online came out with this exclusive. Mm -hmm. The Premier League refused Chelsea permission to sign deal with Paramount Plus as their new shirt sponsors due to concerns it would upset broadcast partners. Firstly, nonsense. Silliness. It's to my understanding, well, the Paramount Plus doesn't show Premier League football. So why would your, you know, broadcast partners get upset with us having a sponsor that's got nothing to do with broadcasting football? You silly, ruddy plonkers. Yet, yet, you're okay with us promoting gambling to young, susceptible minors in the stadiums I've come to watch football with their dads, their granddads, their, all of their familias, and we have got steak.com in front of our shirt. You know, engulf your brain with dopamine hits by ruining your life financially and making yourself generally a sad person. Emotionally, I mean. Um... You know, I've had a flutter every now and again. Let's let's be real here, but there's the greater connotations here. Now, Paramount Plus is, of course, an American TV channel, which would give Chelsea decent money. Now, you've probably seen, if you've seen the new in Inter kit, they're, they're sponsoring Inter. It's certainly striking, but I, I'm okay with it. Well, it looked like certainly a lot better than steak. Uh, the visuals, the optics of the actual, or the, the, the you know the aesthetic of the actual logo itself, Paramount Plus, although a bit busy, it looks better. I mean, I haven't got this prepared on. I probably should have done because I have another image I want to show you in a sec. 
But, um, you know, you can easily Google in the Inter's new kit or the Paramount Plus logo. You know what it is. It says Paramount with a little mountain-y thing underneath. It would be okay. Um, the Premier League has refused Chelsea permission to sign a shirt sponsorship deal with Paramount Plus amid concerns it would upset the competition's broadcast partners. Can we just try and play devil's advocate? Okay, you're Sky or BT. I mean, I guess maybe the, Amer- the American... The American channels that broadcast the Premier League, like ESPN, they probably pay decent money for Premier League rights. ESPN would be annoyed that another American channel on Paramount Plus, maybe. But again, they don't broadcast football, so it just seems nonsensical. In a move that is understood to have triggled, triggled? <laughs> triggered considerable surprise at Stamford Bridge, officials had hoped to complete a deal worth a significant sum within the American outfit. An inter- <laughs> yeah, exactly. An entertainment streaming service that does not even show football in this country. However, they were told that it would be a non-starter by league bosses as they deemed it would break competition rules. Really? Which would leave the deal dead in the water. Ugh. It's probably like a, you know, like a small print, like, don't use other TV channels. Don't do it. Instead, it talks are now ongoing with gambling company Stake.com. Despite the looming ban on betting sponsorships, which, you know, I fully endorse, by the way, but it's not for two seasons, the front of shirt betting sponsorships. I think they will still allow sleeve sponsorships. One, please. Don't quote me on that. (coughs) Excuse me. Chelsea have been seeking a replacement for Mobile Network 3, uh, whose free season agreement ended this summer. They wish to cut ties with the West London club, but after the Roman Abraham, yeah, basically they left us in the lurch, where Trivago stood true. Talks with Paramount Plus are thought to have been in the advanced stage. God, these ruddy Prem people. The international streaming service recently struck a deal with Inter Milan. See, aforementioned, I have good knowledge, which saw the Italians sport their logo in the Champions League final. Yeah, that was almost certainly part of the deal, innit? You're in a Champions League final, you got to wear it then. Um... Yes, but bosses at the Premier League no doubt were wary of setting the likes of Sky Sport and BT Sport refused to grant permission for Paramount Plus, um, it, uh, even though they're not viewed as a direct competitor. They're not even reviewed, um, sorry, not even viewed as a competitor, mate. They're just, you know, on television as well. This is a silly load of nonsense, if you ask me. They said an agreement would not be permitted under the deed of license contract between the Premier League, which covers a wide range of broadcasting and media matters. (sighs) As such, with the new season less than two months away, Chelsea have been backed into a corner. Uh, Of course, we looked at alternatives, uh, Allianz, but we didn't get big enough money from Allianz. It would have been half what we got for free in terms of a year. Stake, an online casino betting platform, have emerged as frontrunners. Any deal with Stake.com would be relatively short-term. The ban comes in at the beginning of the twin, fr- sorry, from the 25-26 season. Although gambling can, uh, firms can continue sponsor sleeves. There you go. I know it all, mate. I, have, I haven't read this, and I've just got it up there. I do read and listen to stuff so I can bring you relevant information. So, Stake.com, you've seen it, it's on the Everton shirt, it's rank, Uh, the Stake looks gross, the fact that it's got a dot .com is really low tone, and it's Chelsea Football Club, mate, come on, do you know what I mean? Dot .com, gambling.com, Chelsea, Jesus, man. Anyway, the Chelsea Supporters Trust did a poll on this, uh, which of course Chelsea will see. Uh, and this is the results. Um, online casino and betting company as a primary shirt sp- uh, shirt sponsor. So, sixty, nearly sixty-two percent strongly disagree, and nearly sixteen percent disagree. So that creates over seventy-five, over seventy-six percent that don't want it. Over three quarters of Chelsea supporters trust um, members said no. 
14% neutral and very, very little. I mean, the 2.8%, I think, are trolling or just like, bring us the money, we don't care about anything. But as you can see, the people have spoken here. And they are not happy, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not either. I do have sympathy a little bit. I understand with this nonsense of Paramount+. Plus. They are back to the corner. They probably had stake as a backup. That is an opportunity to just earn revenue when that is a priority right now. And then understanding how we're probably... It, well, it is short term and we're not in Europe. So it's not like we're going to be flaunting it around in European competitions. It's tough. Before we talk about sponsors, comment on that down below. Sorry, transfers, excuse me. Uh, comment on that down below. I'll be very interested in learning uh, your thoughts on stake. Not, you know, being in Europe one season because we couldn't get Paramount. Or do you think it's just bollocks, really? Um, good opportunity. If you made it this far, you like the content, please do like and subscribe. I dropped my pen! It's like a sexy secretary. But don't worry, you won't have to look at my ass. So what's going on with transfers? Well, Chelsea are heavily reliant currently on Saudi money to bail them out of a jam. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the most likely as things stand are Kalido Koulibaly and uh, Hakim Ziyech. The Saudi clubs are Fabrizio Romano reports that Saudi clubs, I think two different ones respectively, are uh, in London negotiating with Chelsea. Of course, we knew that uh, big Todd Bowley was only so recently in Saudi Arabia. I think he was, wasn't he? So we were like, oh, what's he doing there? Being a sporting director again, apparently. But hey, look, best of luck to Koulibaly. You know, he was a sort of titan of Europe for a while. He came to Chelsea to end his European career. <laughs> As do so many elite European playing football, European league footballers. Uh, similarly, Hakim Ziyech. Ziyech is apparently 30 now. So both of these guys are in their 30s, 30 and 32, respectively. Chasing the bag, I suppose. You know. I don't know. Koulibaly will feel frustrated that he's, I think he's, apart from AFCON, which is obviously a great achievement. But, you know, club-wise, trophyless, I believe. I don't think he obviously left before the Scudetto in Napoli. I don't know if he won anything else there. Um, I can't, yeah, I can't speak for his previous career. I don't know, actually. Uh, Ziyech, of course, sort of won trophies at Chelsea as a sort of rotational player. But, you know, why not chase the bag? They probably see other players doing it. They probably feel like they will be... Um, you know, enjoy a real sort of star treatment out of there. Out in Saudi, there's a really potent football culture. I think that's getting lost in the wash a little bit. It's not like Qatar, when, you know, they just sort of manufactured a sort of football world for the World Cup. There's there's a big, big football following in Saudi and like a proper, you know, derbies and whatnot. So they will, like when players go to Turkey, or they used to go to Turkey, you know, the incredible like derbies and fan culture out there. They probably enjoy something similar in Saudi. Um these players so um you know Koulibaly Ziyech of course others have been linked Mendy Aubameyang Lukaku uh, Lukaku wants to move back to Inter but we don't know if that's possible yet if he doesn't go to Inter I reckon maybe late in the window he goes to Saudi he just doesn't want to go to Chelsea um so he might just take the bag as it were that's really really good um in terms of money generations um we all have our own uh, opinions about the project itself um but you know i don't know i don't know how intrinsically linked this is with the whole the whole grand scheme of sports washing um you know there, there is also elements i had a really good athletic podcast that um they want to diversify the economy in saudi uh, and they want to sort of almost westernify their culture um which you know in terms of human rights women rights and everything like that and you know that's that's a good thing like it wasn't that long ago women weren't allowed to drive and wild stuff like that so you know might be for the greater good i'm just i'm not, geopolitically and you know all the other stuff i'm not really clocked on but in terms of the immediate sense money for chelsea players being sold it's good Edouard Mandy, also from Saudi clubs, has interest from French clubs, um, says Fabrizio Romano. I don't think there'll be an issue selling Mendy. He'll be quite happy to go back to France as a starting goalkeeper Champions League winner, as an AFCON winner. He'll get better money than he did at Rennes. He'll have a much higher profile than he did. Chelsea was an excellent move for Mendy. He won't regret that at all. Now, Brighton. 
those bastards, they are insisting they can buy Levi Colwell. Again, Fabrizio Romano saying, Brighton will insist for Levi Colwell this week after having a £30 million bid rejected. Chelsea's position remains clear. We don't want to sell him. Um, and we want to sell Koulibaly so we can guarantee Levi more game time. I guess rotating with Badia Shield. I guess. Um, oh, man. Like... They, well, they, they are insisting for Chelsea that what so 30 million turns into 40 million I'm tired of getting mugged off by these men you know 62 million Kukurea you know they want to charge us over 100 million for Caicedo but pay 30 million for one of the best young centre backs in European football with the English tax on top and they think that's worth 30 million if they had Levi Colwell as their player a 19 year old England senior international who is like recognised as one of the best up and coming centre backs, who again is English. I know it's nonsense, but they cost more money. They'd be like, yeah, a hundred million pounds. But when they buy it from us, a player that we want, they're like, here's 30 million. You know, are absolutely fuming, mate. Bastards. Um, hopefully Chelsea can hold true, hold strong. And hopefully we don't see it as our only way we can sign. Um, Kai Siedo. It's tough and it's painful. Anyway, I'll be very interested in learning what you guys think. So, oh yeah, also, by the way, uh, Ruben Neves is going to Al Hilal in Saudi. He's 25 years old. It's happening. This is like when Oscar went to China. It's not just uh, people in their 30s, uh, like Kula Bali and Kante and stuff. It's. Um, the young guys are chasing the bag now. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, comment down below. Um, thank you for liking and subscribing. Should you subscribe, hit the bell. Check out OneFootball. It's free. Simply click link in the top of the description. All right, guys. See you soon.